So there's some pictures here of Portugal as I have been here for two months I've been taking pictures and these are just some of them and they're not all in uh, correct order so I'll just tell you a little bit about them as I go. But firstly thanks for coming, uh, just a little bit about the magic of Lisbon and Zaratan because uh, it's really inspired me, I've enjoyed being here, uh, I've walked the streets and you get the hills and you get lost into little streets and all sorts of places and these these images that I took as I've been going around really represent that. Um, as for the people here, there's Isabel who's not here today, is she? No, no, she has a problem. Okay, but that's all right. Um, she has a message of support. Yeah, she supports here and uh, she's been very good with uh, sort of helping with the work and she liked the little pyramid on a blade of grass uh, so I think I'd like to give her that piece of work and obviously Jose who if that pronunciation is right I mean I don't know. Jose. Jose! Okay. Um, I'd like to give you past person the lady because you realize that I just let the mask down a little bit so that the nose was poking out and that's what we all do when we wear glasses we pull these masks because the glasses steam up and so we've got the mask on but it's not doing anything and uh, Gemma obviously who is Italian and then learned to speak Portuguese and English and I sent her my artist statement and she, met, she sent me back a better version of it than I did in a third language so I think a brush stroke of what's going on so that idea of being controlled externally and this month I've been looking at internal because uh, I've been on a journey myself and I've been uh, trying to understand how we tick and I can only speak for myself but I've been doing some meditation and various sort of Eastern philosophical practices and whatnot and I've really tried to narrow it down to two words one is ego and the other is soul but obviously soul can be classed as your heart, your spirit, your inner self, whatever you want to say. One of the um, people I've been following is a, an American woman called Brandon Bays and she talks about when you uh, have wounds from your childhood or anything through your life uh, and your ego feeds on this and so if someone says something to you where you feel embarrassed or maybe wounded a little bit upset what she does she asks you to look at the uh, feelings that you're having and then drill down through those and keep drilling down back to what she calls source and when you get to source you, you really with your soul it's just very calm and when I, when I went back to source it was just really about um, being in a very warm field with sunlight and uh, you know you might say well sounds like you're on drugs but it, it was just me a meditational practice so I've been doing that kind of thing and so this exhibition really is trying to uh, look at the ideas that I had and then hone them down to a final piece and the final piece is this little one on a mop and bucket which is just really about how the ego can trap uh, if you like your true potential and it can stop it from being released so it's a seed pod and obviously the seeds can't be released uh, the pod looks a little bit like a mouth and the peg is is clamping that and it's it's really just about being able to express yourself and uh, during this COVID obviously people are dying and it's a very tragic situation but I've also written a poem about how we can just live in fear and maybe we should uh, should also question the other side of that you know do, do we really go down that fear route and we don't do anything or do we open up and, and talk about it and try and get more dialogue going instead of everybody just living in fear 
so that was part of that. Um, last month Hannah worked here, an American girl, and it was a privilege to work with her. And Yenna this month, and you did a wonderful uh, a performance piece in there, and I just want to say thank you um, for seeing that, it was very interesting. Uh, Gemma gave me the best critique of my life because at university, at university you used to do some work and once a week the professors would sit down, they'd look at what you'd been doing and then you'd have some dialogue. And when I'd set the, well when we set this exhibition up, my ego wanted feeding. I'm just a poor little artist and I've made all this stuff and is it any good? And I, so I said to Gemma, you know, what do you think? And she said, well, I've been too close to it and I wouldn't presume to try and steer your practice, you know. And so I was like, I've done all this work and no feedback and, you know. And so I was thinking about this during the night and the next morning I realised that the only real question that an artist should ask themselves is, did I make this work with my soul? And if the answer is yes, if you, if you really poured your soul into it, and you did the best you could at the time, then it doesn't really matter what anyone else thinks. It's real art because you've given of yourself to that piece of work. And critique by other people can be useful or not, but it doesn't really matter. You put that idea or that piece of art out into the world, and then it's for others to make of what they will. So that's basically uh, what I wanted to say about um, the actual, you know, being here. The other thing about my ego was that uh, I like to use found objects, things that have been discarded, and so I was out on the streets and I would find cardboard and I would come back and, as you can see out there, cut it up into shapes and, and I'm thinking, God, you know, is this what you do now? You go and find cardboard and my ego was saying, oh, you know, you're just a tramp wandering the streets who found materials and um, anyway <laughs> but I was walking down the street and, and a woman was sat outside a cafe having a, a coffee and some lunch and there was this tin this uh, monster fast drink tin and it was perfect for that little piece at the beginning you know the one with the baby in the cot well it's a reversal it's the toy in the cot and the babies are floating around but and uh, I really wanted this monster tin, but the woman was sat there and the tin was on the street, slightly damaged. And I thought, I dare pick it up. You know, my ego was telling me, oh, no, you can't do that. You know, the woman's going to think you're a tramp. It's just an empty, empty tin. And so I walked right to the bottom of the street. And then I listened to my soul because it was perfect for the piece. And so I just steeled up my courage. And I turned around, I walked back up the street, the woman was still sitting there, and I picked up the tin, and the woman sort of looked at me like I was crazy. And I walked down the street, and as I was walking down the street, this big grin appeared on my face. And there's another woman coming towards me, and as I grinned, she just saw me and must have thought, what the hell's this guy doing? You know, he's just laughing at nothing, you know. And so that, that, that sort of ego versus soul all the time, and uh, I think the ego tricks us many times and it stops us from being the best we can be because it might tell us we can't or it might tell us we can and we have a huge ego and then things can happen in history as we know with people with massive egos. But the ego is a, a, a mind-made construct so it can never be satisfied and whatever you do, you buy a big car, it's okay for a week or two then you need a bigger car, you need a bigger house, you need uh, Gucci shoes, you need, you know, whatever it is, it's never enough. You, you buy something and then your ego says, ah, yeah, but what's next, what's next, what's next? And if you go back to your soul, you really just dispense with all that and you become more peaceful, uh, you become more true to yourself and true to other people around you. And so really that's what this exhibition is about. And I'm here to answer questions on any of the pieces. Um, I'll just take you through a few photographs and a little bit about uh, the thought processes uh, because, as I say, I honed the ideas down to a final piece. But on this occasion, I thought, well, 
I'll leave the other objects that were like trial and error. There were there were trial pieces of art that didn't quite. If you imagine a, a, a film uh, director, uh, the cuts of the film wind up on the cutting room floor, and the film might they might have taken a hundred hours worth of film, and you get a film that's 90 minutes long, and there's a lot of stuff on the floor, and so I thought I'd leave the various things in place uh, just so that you could see part of my process anyway. So at the time when I was walking through Lisbon I was taking a lot of photographs, uh, maybe uh, four or five hundred since I've been here and I post a lot of them on Instagram. Uh, if anyone wants my Instagram address I'll give it to them. But uh, at the time there was a, 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 a banana on an exhibition somewhere I forget where, and they reckoned it was worth ninety thousand dollars or something, and it was that one that was taped to the wall, and then another artist came and ate it and said it was a performance piece. Yes. Yeah, but anyway, anyway, yeah, anyway, you know the piece, or maybe, and here on a on a on a dustbin just up the street, there were three bananas just sat there, they'd just been thrown away presumably because they were overripe and so I thought well that's three times ninety thousand dollars here just sat there in Lisbon and nobody even bothers about it some of the uh, graffiti is amazing and there are many many areas that have got graffiti and part of me responds to this because it's almost like uh, the developers or millionaires possibly as I understand it are buying property and then just letting it go to ruin uh, maybe the prices go up on it maybe if it collapses they don't have to keep that style of building they can build a different type of building I don't know but it just seems there are a few areas in Lisbon with a lot of graffiti and some of it's very interesting um, this is just some of how I write down my ideas and how they become works uh, so you'll see out there some of these pieces of work and how I arrive at it and then uh, for this I was just looking at the how the uh, work progressed so originally I was thinking about how the ego wants us to be seen by others as being a little bit special and so there's a guy who uh, of uh, work about about living in the now called Eckhart Tolle, and he and he just talks about uh, how we uh, try to be somehow elevated amongst our peers and seem to be somehow interesting or slightly better. So he's, the way he puts it is, if you buy a Rolls Royce, you might be special, but if everybody drove a Rolls Royce you'd just be the same as everybody else. So the idea came to me about that was a box and the way that the ego tries to control things and put them into boxes and make you think in a certain way but it's never satisfied so there's an open end to it and then I thought of a box with an open end and that became a cot for a baby and how we try to control the environment of babies and make it very secure but we still have babies that die through cot death and we don't really know why and then we measure everything and uh, we still lose control and the pyramid again I was looking at something where human beings have belief systems and the ego of the Pharaoh was so huge and the people that followed him they would build a huge pyramid and it would cost many lives to produce it and the idea was that the pharaoh could go over to the other side he could take all or she i think there were one or two female ones as well uh, could take their their uh, precious items gold and food and things to the other side and still be wealthy and i was thinking about this and the way that the first thing that the embalmers did to keep the bodies they used to mummify the bodies would put a hook up the nose and pull the brains out and so it got me thinking well didn't the pharaohs need a brain on the other side and then there was the 
uh, tomb raiders that used to go into the pyramids and steal everything. So again, did this guy just wind up being poor on the other side? You know, it didn't make any sense to so the whole idea of ego and systems and belief systems, religions, all that sort of thing just played into this idea and at the end we still lose control because we die and judgment uh, judgment about say a sporting event where you've got uh, a winner a second and third place and then the idea of reversing this and so again we'll lose control of it because it's not a true representation you know the person who wins it on the day could be on some kind of special steroids as we see in cycling where they can't detect them or they could just be having a bad day uh, and they, they could have won on that day but they didn't and so that, that's what that's about and then the bottom one is about potential and how we've all got potential but our ego often uh, stops that, it ties it up within us, it doesn't allow us to release it and so we lose that potential this was the uh, one more beer and uh, it's uh, a little bit dark in the sense that uh, you know I'm talking here about everybody wearing masks and everybody trying to prevent this and sometimes they look at you in a certain way uh, and I saw a little comedic s sketch where before Covid it was showing how a guy was in a cafe and he was reading his paper and the guy next to him came and sat down with a coffee and then he sneezed and he, he didn't have a handkerchief and so the guy that's reading the paper puts the paper down gets the handkerchief out and offers it to him and the guy says thank you and carries on and they both carry on and then after Covid it showed the guy with the newspaper go hmm, and he puts the newspaper and he walks out because he thinks the guy has got Covid and he's going to give him Covid and so it's this change in the way that we relate to each other. Uh, I live in the south of France and Claire's from France, she's French, and uh, you know, hug, hugging and kissing is normal in France. And since this, obviously, no one does it, we all do this with our elbows, and it all feels a little bit. And so, this was just a, an idea of one more beer because we could just still have a beer together. And this was a like from a boxing uh, poster, an old boxing poster, because every artist that comes here can make a poster. And so it was really for the poster just about uh, the red corner ego. And the ego is promoted by self because the ego is a, a mental construct, it doesn't exist. And it's from the past and future because the ego always looks at things that happen in the past and tries to project them into the future and it steers you by doing that ah you know if you do this remember what happened last time and the future might look like this but we don't know what the future is and the soul is more like Eckhart Tolle's philosophy where it's just an experiential life the only moment you ever have is this moment now and as soon as it's gone it's history and it's got nothing to do with your life anymore because it's gone and we don't know about the future because like now I'm an old guy and I could just kill over with a heart attack so I might not even you know get to the end of this and oh thank you but uh, that's from now it's from this moment and so the ego of past and future and the uh, soul and the idea of experiencing life as you go this was uh, like a spider diagram, I won't go through it all, but it's the same sort of thing. And then these are some more pictures that I took about around Lisbon. Uh, this guy looks to be extolling lots of uh, virtuous advice to people, and I'm sure he was very famous, I don't know who he was, but, um, you know, we try to remember famous people, and uh, in the park, uh, just at the top there, a guy Sanchez. set up. A guy, a guy set up a, a hammock because he had nowhere to sleep, and he had his little belongings next to his hammock, and he was just swaying in the hammock. And there's one of these guys right in front of him, and the picture that I took, which I don't know where it's gone now, had this dignitary.
that over a hundred years later is still sort of, you know, a bronze. And the reality in the now is that there's a guy there that doesn't even have a, a building to sleep in that's made a hammock in the park. Um, this one, it's just, it's because I'm English and, and suicide is a little bit like suicide and so I called it the big sleep because I thought, well, if you go to this hotel, do you ever leave? And um, this one was an interesting one down on the harbour because there's a boat inside a boat and I just thought it was an interesting shot. Uh, the British School of Lisbon and all the history that the Brits and the Lisbon people have together. This was interesting because you know the pull down uh, grids you have for the shops and the shop behind it, the door and everything had vanished because it was just a c crumbling building uh, but everybody had thrown the rubbish in and so the idea that we were somehow making safe keeping this rubbish behind what used to protect a shop was now protecting all this rubbish as if it had suddenly become very you know worth a fortune this was a jellyfish down on the harbour and I just manipulated the, <coughs> the building uh, there was a chair discarded and because it was gold with a, a, a crimson base but it was collapsed I just thought it was a metaphor for how royal and hierarchical systems should really be dispensed with now they're now used to us and again that's how when you have a church or something it's always in an elevated position so no one forgets more than it's, it's looking down it's always looking down uh, this was an interesting one because it was just some tram lines that just stopped and I just called the end of the line and I thought it was amazing because why the hell did they put it? Did they make a mistake? What happened? And then this guy was wheeling around his little uh, ice cream car and I thought it was very green because he had to pedal um, just in the park. And then some of the, the uh, imagery around Lisbon where people have broken windows, I just thought it was very immediate, very visceral. And then this was up in the park and it looked like a jungle. And then obviously one way it's the walk of Jesus and a few Jesus more. Is the, the yeah. yeah, okay. It's not a real yeah, thing. well, I know. But, <laughs> but I, I didn't know that. It's no, another one. True, it's I didn't it's know. Another I didn't know. Anyway, there's a few more images Portugal ca craft beer and uh, just the idea of a message in a bottle. And the message in this bottle is on the outside of the bottle and it's talking about pollution. And then this was mother and child, I called it, because it looked like in English it was saying angry, and the mother was chastising the child for doing something wrong. And then this was a piece of work that was done in here to some music, and I just sat in there with my eyes closed, and I just responded to the music as it was playing. And I think that's pretty much it, really, you know. So thank you for listening. That's thank it. You. Cheers. Cheers. Any questions? And I'm around, okay? I'll let you know. Yeah, okay. you're not going to run. No, don't let me run. I'm too old to run.
I'm Lena. I'm from South Korea and lives in a, have, have lived in Prague since 2016. I moved to Prague because I wanted to. My nickname was uh, Bohemian, and um, I just wanted to know what what that means. Uh, Bohemian and thirst for uh, the terms and in French terms is sort of artistic style, a sort of style where uh, sometimes it's it means like a chill person or artistic person who doesn't care much living their uh, own mood or something and at the same time it was the person who lived in a uh, bohemian republic which is now is czech republic and i just wanted to prove myself oh am i uh, enough bohemian or bohemian person and if i have this kind of vibe uh, maybe i will find a better place to um, lay down my soul um, because my uh, country is quite busy, very um, high competitive society. I couldn't, I was always late and I couldn't really catch up the speed there. So I moved to Prague and then I'm, I'm having great time since now. Until now, this is fine. And then uh, last year I finished my master degree in animation. I studied animation, but I was always interested in uh, I studied film, philosophy, and also uh, animation and, and visual art and illustration. I always wanted to know more and more. Like I would just explore myself in diversity in art form. And then uh, now I also um, I also used to dance contemporary dance and Korean traditional dance. And uh, the more uh, the older I am, uh, the more I become more into my own roots. Like I, I just don't know. Like maybe it's human destiny. You want to go back to the roots and then go back to the beginning of life and then uh, trace back the where the ancestor, your ancestor, um, used to be or used to do. But you never know because you never met them. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, uh, now I do uh, PhD uh, research in uh, uh, contemporary art therapy inspired by Korean shamanism and um, Korean shamanism and also uh, the color of traditional five colors called Obangsek is uh, it means five direction colors and the black means um, black is wood and then the nurse direction and then the uh, wood is blue and then blue is the uh, blue. Ah, blue is the east and then the fire is red and then the direction is south and then the gold or iron or metal is uh, it means the west and it's white and in the middle there is a soil or gold not gold but the soil and this one is directing the middle so these five colors are the compass and I use as a um, direction or the uh, compass of my research project and each year I have a, a one color per year and last year I chose the black one and I explored the uh, genre of the music called dark play and it's a bit shamanic and uh, dark and it's a bit um, dreamy at the same time, so I found the um, connection between the two uh, genres of the music. So uh, I made a um, shamanic uh, band, uh, Gyuld. Gyuld means uh, in Korean, Olgul. Uh, it's like uh, faces, and Olgul means spirits of the uh, bowl of the spirit. It's it calls uh, orgul and then it means the face and then we i just wanted to uh, make the group like uh, we are three faces and then three spirits and um, this makes us uh, improvise improvise the sound and then we never plan anything we just play together and we listen to each other and then it how it works this uh, sound project and then we performed the last uh, August and it's very soon, but we started from 2019 and it was my first year of the research project and I wanted to make a shaman song because in um, Korean shamanism there is a music and a shaman who sings the lyrics and then there is a dance and there is a people who play the music together and then the 
visual elements and and I feel that this shamanic ritual is a uh, total art like there is everything in it and it's also very connected to animation because it's a whole world and it's not only one and you have everything at one one time and uh, you have audience in front of you too and shaman is also entertainer so um, and she or he doesn't do uh, only for um, praying or wishes but uh, people there like shaman is there to entertain people as well and each year it like I have this uh, long-term um, artistic project contemporary art therapy practice inspired by sh uh, Korean shamanism and now I'm in uh, this red period and uh, so this year I, I started working on painting as a fortune telling and so this one I realized in this Zaratan residency and which is just there um, I wanted to uh, each year I wanted to make an element to uh, complete the shamanic ritual that I want to recreate so it's basically the same but I separate them and then develop or change or recreate each pieces and then eventually uh, after after three years in white uh, year white color year I will make a, a theater performance and then uh, you will still feel is the shaman ritual or inspired by shaman ritual but you have everything completely changed in your own way so I wanted to make this uh, authentic personal uh, shaman ritual and then it's personal religion and you create the whole uh, realm by yourself and then it's going like this way and then uh, it's the map I'm following but each uh, year and each color I never know what's happening because I never can plan it concretely like uh, even though I planned it it's only half because the coins uh, completion and our outcome is always different because it's somewhere like um, I'm, I'm an artist and then I planned it but as I'm uh, presenting it uh, the on the spot there is another energy in a, another uh, audience sending me different energy and then the third person who is a spirit or uh, my godness or uh, some something else that I can call what it what it is and then we three of us this uh, triangle of the energy always change the consequences so I, I never know what's gonna happen till the end of this research and, um, and this year um, I came here for a uh, continuation of my music project but I, it didn't really work like everything what I planned was not working and I just explore and I enjoyed the sea and I uh, had a nice time here and then I realized that I should just um, be easy going uh, to my step and then I need to just uh, feel free to do whatever I want or what my soul tells me to do so I just went for paintings and um, by coincidence I brought a lot of painting um, materials and I was ready for painting almost every day and then I could do it like many many times I brought a lot of papers I was really ambitious and and uh, I started um, painting like a little bit of small scale and then uh, it was this uh, first one and I was imagining like um, maybe something uh, some somebody or animal was mothered and then it was on the plant and this blood uh, just spread it like strained the blood out there and then it was on the grass or something like that but I never know because I didn't plan it and I see this uh, at the end and my painting is all about this fortune telling because I never know the uh, what is the completion and I'm seeing I'm in after the completion and I never know uh, what I'm doing I don't know what I'm doing and then I just need to um, look back and then maybe like I remember this moment of me doing this um, navy color. Maybe I wanted to make it like a knight. Is this uh, creature got murdered at night, or why? Why this uh, white dots are happening there? I never know. Uh, this is a banana, but doesn't mean that I give it banana like uh, it was not. And I felt kind of peaceful and chill and nice. And uh, 
it's not bananas, it's banana because it's the name of this uh, being. It's not bananas, yeah, so it's just the name of this painting. And then this papaya because uh, the color looks like papaya and I really enjoyed the papaya here. It was really beautiful and then the seed was like full of seed, like the half-cut half papaya. There are a lot of seed and it was really like for me full of um, lives and and uh, full of possibility and I start just making a lot of white dots and I never know like I, I still don't know why I made a lot of dots but one dot I kind of refer myself like mm, maybe I'm also one of dots or myself or my family or the whole universe or maybe some lights or soil I never know just elements of the atoms or something like this and then the I moved to a bigger paper because I was I started preparing the exhibition and this one I look like it looks like the firebird it's like uh, this side also the bird but that side also is the bird and then and also the shadow of the bird so I never know if it's the perspective from the uh, sky or the from the ground or why it's like uh, divided into two why they're going south and north and uh, across and uh, maybe it was the forest and it was the soil so I never know or it was the leftover blood spread uh, strained in the grass and this one is the rivers and organs I felt that I'm drawing something like um, on ant, ant house or something but it looks like really like fluid and river but river like uh, human organs like more like organic and also like the sense of blood and this one was a bit clear to me like I was uh, not depressed but it feels like um, uh, I'm not crying alone but like so many uh, cries from the sky I felt like so many cries from the sky and so many tears from the sky so I don't know like who's, who else crying um, except for me so I just <laughs> So somebody else is sad, that I am. And this is burning architecture, but it was really interesting because um, it was not really planned to be like this way. But somehow I used this paper underneath of the on, another um, painting, and then it left some structure. Uh, and then I used the uh, I used the paper like upside down, and I used the uh, leftover drops to make a structure and then I saw yeah it's kind of architecture maybe made of stone but uh, it's transparent and then something is burning inside and I don't know how many people are inside or some disaster or is it blood and what is why why is this and then why is this uh, sadness around I, I don't know and this one was like, uh, I feel like I'm drawing mushroom, but mushroom was erupted and it's broken And I also started making even more dots. And then more dots appearing. And then uh, there was a drastic change between this, this and then this. And after this, I started to feel like um, I feel I enjoy this weather a lot and then and uh, suddenly I chose a brighter color so it seems my mind was kind of I just left a lot of stress behind me and then just accept how it is right now so I started painting a bit like lighter color and then some um, sharpness time to time and this one I particularly felt all the pieces are uh, matching perfectly because it was like uh, yin and yang and also yin and yang several times and it was making perfect harmony and then everything was um, it's not really contrast too much like everything is blue or green or yellow and then there was no sense of blood anymore or red anymore so I feel it's complete piece and it's matched puzzles and it, it was like a total calmness in yin and yang um, and this one was my last painting and then uh, 
Mm, the red came back, but with a controlled way, and I feel mm, there is a sense of little bit of sadness, but somehow you make it little pieces and a kind of a manageable or something like this. And then, uh, and then my last piece was about this uh, performance, and I can say it's the last piece of this whole project. And uh, uh, if you didn't see it, I don't know how to make this But I can just explain. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just um, wanted to briefly. Oh no, I don't want some. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. I um. I started from one point to another, and I use only the small lamp with me because when you um start journey into the cave and it's total darkness and you're relying on this little candle and candlelight to find the ways and I feel like I'm searching my journey and sometimes I look back what I've done because um, if you want to know the future you have to look back it's kind of a one Korean quotation I, I, ne I don't remember what was exactly the exact words but um, your part of your past where like if you um, collect some pieces of your past and you can sort of anticipate your future as well but it's like really fortune telling things and sometimes for me future is not really um, totally uncovered and sometimes I feel I'm um, as the pl present moment is moving up and you are with past but also present is not really complete um, compilation of the moment it's like we're living with future as well because it was past like uh, you one breath and one uh, another breath like you sort of observe the future at the same time so it's like future is continuous moment and and I feel like as I'm moving brush, I never know what what should I do, what what color I should choose, but um, somehow you had to really be hurry because when you stop, you start thinking, and then your thinking stops um, controlling your uh, physical um, brain. And I really had to be hurry, and then no no no, you can't think, and you just grab whatever, and then and then once I grab the color, I started the uh, drawing. But I don't know what's this, and then sometimes I did the boxes and I did the bone of the fish or some dots, and maybe I'm filling the gaps between um, different colors, and and I don't know. It was really like organic, and and um, it was really nice meditation because I was in art institution for a long time, and I learned everything, and and um, at the end of the uh, art institution and art education. I feel like I'm. Um, I want to be free from it, and it's it's kind of a strange contrast. And um, I feel like I'm back to my baby self. Like I started painting since since uh, two years old. A really long relationship with the empty paper and me doing this thing. So 
uh, and I passed some hard time when I had sh uh, serious depression and um, some insomnia moments, it was really difficult to uh, overcome. But uh, at that time, uh, I had I really had to rely on this um, activity painting and painting I've done like a 300 and uh, until I'm exhausted and fall asleep in the evening, in the morning, or I just forgot the time. I was just really like um, fall into painting so much, and I, it was the only exit uh, from my mental difficulty or um, the real world I wanted to escape from it and I built up I dig the ground and then I built up the structure of the architecture and castle in my own um, fantasy world or my spiritual uh, planet and there I only was able to really lay down comfortably and then sleep there so it was really hard to um, coming out from there as it was so sweet and and, uh, and I started to call this uh, little thing um, I named it for a long time ago but then I forgot it was kind of a little baby like and it was sort of like my shadow or um, but it's so strong it's masculine and this l being um, who are not creature but spiritual body it had and I sometimes had a conversation with this being and um, sometimes it showed me dark really really dark um, paintings and sometimes um, really aggressive paintings and I feel like I don't have power over my painting but this being is um, saying like the word uh, he was just letting this shape happen onto the paper and, and it was the moment that I had really intimate relationship with this being but then um, I moved to a new country and then I had really busy time get used to being in a new country and, and now I settled down but uh, I wanted to call this back this uh, being I just left or I abandoned for a long time ago and I felt somehow moved while I was doing this because I felt ah it, it comes back it's next to me and and um, I remember once it cured my depression and I was able to overcome my pa uh, past difficulties and and it's not um, completely done but uh, I cure myself over painting and it's continuous and and this ritual is my uh, eternal loyalty and faithfulness to the church that I created and this is only language I can communicate with this being and um, this is the my uh, expression to um, thankfulness to the being that I uh, continuously can overcome as a human but as, as I'm human, I'm based on the verbal language, but to communicate with the spirit, I can't use the language because it doesn't work. So our communication is over this um, unconsciousness and trance moment and, and uh, this being is telling me something with the structure, like abstract organic shapes and I'm reading it and okay, this was the message from this conversation and this moment. And and that's the um, our communication. Um, so I made it as a ritual, and the, this ritual is very. Uh, this art piece is very religious uh, because I it, it's a uh, it's my uh, own religion, and this is the um, way to tell this uh, my own God. Um, so. In three years, I will complete another pieces. So visual elements and music. And um, next year, I'm thinking of uh, developing dance also. I um, experimented a little bit with their steps and everything, but it was not uh, planned for this year. So um, next year, I will um, develop this part more. So it it will be more um, people engaging. 
and it will be bigger uh, stage and um, and also I need to find collaborators and uh, more art uh, media will be included and at the end I want to make a proper um, shamanic ritual and more people can join and come and bigger stage so um, uh, it could be nice uh, if I make that more genuine and more um, contains deeper meaning out of it because I feel I just started in this situation and it's really difficult because um, I don't have much references to follow it's like mm, I need to really dig, um, dig really myself so what is there and it's uh, there is no bible of uh, this religion because it's, it was created from here so I need to really go back and sometimes it's really um, annoying to see what happened to your past life and then there were a lot of unpleasant memories and you have to open it it's really painful it's like you already uh, covered with the stitches and then you have to take out the stitches and then open the wound and it's a lot of blood and uh, a lot of darkness and shadow coming out but you have to really face it otherwise you can't really complete this project perfectly and then genuine and and I think that um, contemporary art scene now is like full of um, um, coolness but I'm more like uh, old-fashioned than traditional um, what I'm doing is more like ancient or even also myself thinking like is, is the project about chanting my childhood like dark childhood like darkest uh, period of your life you don't want to look back but you are looking back and then faced with uh, um, this uh, avoidance or um, you want to um, reconcile um, that moment and then uh, this process of healing yourself I feel that uh, sharing this moment healing process I hope that some other people who never want to um, do this, I do it instead of you and then uh, somehow uh, cure the, them or maybe make them to think it's, it's not a shame to have this, uh, such dark memories and um, somebody else is trying to fight and don't be afraid to uh, look back and fight and, and um, so I want to uh, do it instead of uh, representative uh, uh, people of, uh, who has whoever has this mental difficulty and don't know how to deal with it. Mm, so um, I'm kind of uh, praying for these uh, people. So I feel um, a lot of responsibility because I don't want to use uh, this as a tool. It's really genuine. It's for myself and and also for other people who has this uh, problem uh, it's very serious and it's very uh, mm, worldwide uh, phenomenon in this contemporary world people want to um, lay down somewhere but um, life is busy and um, just people want to cover their, their selves and uh, want to be cool all the time but um, I think at the end of the night uh, you really feel you're lonely so um, I want to develop this healing art and I want to share this uh, my genuinity to face um, my own self darkness and then uh, I hope that some people would get it <laughs> but not everyone has to but uh, I hope that it reaches uh, somewhere so thank you <laughs>
because it seems they're like uh, crying or whatever. So I just collect them into into the middle, and then I hug them as a egg or core or essence of the moment because the moment is uh, you already have this moment, and then you don't have to possess it, and it's already yours forever. So um, I didn't think that I should keep like a perfect shape so I just had it like a egg and I was holding it and I slept next to it and it was the end of the performance yeah so it was really great this residency because I it, it's my first uh, performance and it's first residency ever in my life so um, it was really intense time over there and I didn't really have much time to explore the Lisbon and then the weather now is getting cold and I feel a little bit sad but uh, it was really mm, meaningful time I feel I improved myself quite a lot and I feel totally differently from the beginning compared to beginning and the end I feel more solid mm. yeah Finito. maybe you can leave the performance with sound just for, ah, okay. just for us and you can mm -hmm. also but there it's, it's oh ah, yeah I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>